Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. Uh, it's good to see all of you gathering here this morning. I, uh, uh, I think it goes without saying that this is going to be a different Easter, and there are certainly lots of traditions um, that aren't happening, whether that's the uh, joy of gathering together on Easter morning, uh, or the Easter flowers, or your favorite hymns and choir anthems. Uh, maybe you're still having that afternoon ham, and I certainly hope you are, uh, but one Easter tradition that I know we can continue is the tradition of the Easter greeting, which of course is Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, hallelujah. I hope, uh, I hope your neighbors could hear you, and if they couldn't, maybe let's once more, I'll see if I can hear you. Christ is risen, friends. Christ is risen indeed, hallelujah. Well, I um, want to welcome you all here, and uh, yes, Easter is different this year than we are used to celebrating, um, but I also think this Easter is as close to the first Easter as will probably ever come. You know, just like the first Easter when they were all in their sweatpants and needed haircuts. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, the first Easter was, you know, celebrated in the midst of death in loss, in, in the midst of suffering and uncertainty, uh, the fear that gripped the first disciples who went to the tomb that first Easter, um, fear, fear hung over th that first Easter the same way that it, it hangs over our celebration like a rain cloud today. And chances are, just like the, the first Easter, you are maybe alone, um, you are maybe um, just with a few people. Uh, in any case, um, as we gather for Easter worship, uh, to worship together, to pray together, to tell the Easter story, and uh, you know, to find courage in the midst of, of fear and uncertainty. And so uh, even though we gather at a distance, we can trust that the Holy Spirit is knitting us together even now. So. I want to invite you to pray with me and welcome you to worship. Hopefully in the comments below you have uh, found you know, a little bulletin uh, where you can click to kind of find an outline of the service and the hymn lyrics, um, as well as a link to give securely through uh, MPC's online giving page. Uh, I want to encourage you today uh, to, make a, to make an offering, uh, to also participate in the one great hour of sharing offering. and so. Kids, if you're out there and your fish box is so full that it's overflowing, uh, let me know. Have your parents let me know. I could send you another one, and then when we get together next, uh, you bring those fish boxes in, okay? So, uh, once more, Christ is risen, friends. I could hear you. I, I could hear you that time. Let us pray. Holy God, whether we can hear each other or not, you hear us. You knit us together, you bind us together, and as we come together this day, we celebrate that you have won victory over death, raising Jesus from the grave and giving us eternal life. We give you thanks this day. So glory to you, O God, glory to you, O Christ, for us and for our salvation, you overcame death and opened the gate to everlasting life. Glory to you, Holy Spirit. You lead us into truth. Glory to you, blessed Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Let's sing together a familiar refrain.
Would you pray with me and ask God's blessing on the reading of scripture this morning? Holy God, the good news of your resurrection was shocking, unsettling, it was surprising when it was first heard. And so as we gather in worship today, as we listen once more to this story, may our joy at this good news give voice to our witness and the hope of our hearts. We pray in the name of our crucified and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The gospel reading this morning is from Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. Uh, if you're following along in your Bible, you're going to notice that it's not quite the end. And there, there's a few more verses that go on after this. And so most scholars think that these first eight verses are the original ending to Mark's gospel. And um, for some people that can be problematic to think about, but as you come to the end of this passage, it's a little unsettling. And so those first disciples like us kind of want to get that ending filled in. So uh, I'm going to invite us to, to rest in the uncertainty and um, just recognize that hearing Mark's gospel in the way that it was meant to be concluded um, is very fitting for us today. So Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The word of the Lord, friends. Thanks be to God. I want to begin with, with a word to the kids who are uh, tuned in out there. You know, on this Easter morning, that's different for you too. I know my kids were, you know, chagrinning their jelly bean free lifestyle these days, and um, I just, I just want to honor that. I want to recognize that those kids are out there and uh, that they're experiencing things differently just like we are. I also recognize that kids are sometimes a lot more resilient than adults when it comes to change. So um, we can probably take a lesson or two. But what I wanted to say to the kids is that uh, how this gospel story ends, um, where, where these three women who go to the tomb expecting to find Jesus, uh, expecting to finish the funeral work, the burial preparations. Um, they run, they leave, they're scared, and they're silent. And uh, I, I think sometimes as adults, but especially as kids, when we get scared, it's easy to, it's easy to um, kind of lose our voices. And so, um, kids out there, you are hyper aware when something isn't fair, when something isn't right. And uh, so I want to encourage you, I want to encourage you to use your voices, uh, even when you're scared, uh, to use your voices to share the good news and to speak up uh, when you know something isn't right, and uh, to share the good news and the encouragement that you have to give. All right? So, Full disclosure here, this Easter story is just the beginning. It ends in fear, but we all know here we are telling it, retelling it, 
needing to hear it at a moment like this that we're in today. It's just the beginning. Easter isn't one day. Easter is every day because Jesus crucified and risen changed the world even if we haven't noticed it. All right? So this is just the beginning. And this Easter story enfolds us. It enfolds our lives. It brings our stories in. And our lives are a, a contribution to this ongoing story, this ongoing story of God's love for the world that's revealed in Jesus. And so we, like the first disciples, these, these first disciples who walk away in fear but found uh, courage to tell the story, we get to add the next chapter. So even if this day began in fear and uncertainty for you, you get to choose how the story ends today. So like those first disciples, you know, it's easy to be afraid right now. It's easy to be afraid because of the things we know and the things we don't know and uh, the rumors we've heard and, and all sorts of mess that uh, makes people fearful. So whether you are worried about friends or family or uh, your job or your health or your loved one's health, um, we bring all those fears uh, to God on this Easter Sunday. And, and we know that God meets us in those fears. And so we tell this story because we need to hear it right now. You know, I, I, I think about the times when I've been with families who have lost someone that they love. Um, I've noticed this pattern that unfolds. And um, the, people, the people closest to uh, someone who has died, they, they exhibit this sort of strength that, uh, that kind of disarms the rest of us. You know, it's like, oh man, she just lost her husband. I can't believe she's going on. Um, the person, you know, then uses all their remaining strength to run this gauntlet race of, of planning a funeral, meeting with the pastor, meeting with the funeral home, uh, organizing food, getting flowers, going to the cemetery. And, um, you know, finally when the funeral comes, when the burial's over and everyone else goes home, it's that moment that that person, whether it's a child burying a parent or a spouse marrying, burying a partner, a friend burying another friend, it's, it's really that moment that the grieving begins. And perhaps for the first time, they start uh, to cry and, and it might be over something that they would have never seen coming. And it's all at once the tsunami of, of gratitude for having been loved by this person, having got to spend their life with them, um, but also the tsunami of grief, and they're, they're caught up. And so I suspect, I suspect that the women who went to the Jesus tomb that first Easter, they, they fit this pattern. They, they had done what they needed to do. They had been there at, when Jesus was crucified. They had done the minimal to get ready for the Sabbath. And uh, when the Sabbath was over, where we pick up the story here, they were coming back to properly bury Jesus. And so they had purchased all the supplies necessary. They had um, given of themselves to, to honor their loved one. And so, but I'm, I'm sure at the same time they were overcome with with those feelings that come only after uh, everybody else has gone home and so at the same time um, at the same time we hear how they are gripped by terror amazement fear you know they you know I think they're afraid because you know they showed up expecting a funeral they showed up expecting the world as they knew it to stay the same. And so I'm, I'm sure fear is a reasonable reaction to dead people coming alive, right? But I also think they feared of what could happen to them. You know, if they lived the way Jesus lived, what could happen to them? You know, were they signing up for a life 
that ended in their own cross. So friends, I imagine as we go along in this socially distant world and this um, pandemic trouble that we're in, I imagine that there's going to be a moment, and, and maybe you've already had one, where you're just going to start crying for no reason. And the grief of the losses that you've experienced, when it sort of adds up how many people have died, how many people are sick, what the aftermath will be. And the truth is, we need to do that grieving. But we can do it differently as Easter people. We can do it differently when we recognize the ways that the world has changed because Jesus who was crucified is risen from the dead. So I wonder, will the change to come after all this, is it going to be like a New Year's resolution where, you know, by the end of January or the end of February, you're sort of back to business as usual? You know, is that what's going to happen? You know, or maybe we'll be like people in recovery. You know, people in recovery who make a decision every single day to stay sober. Will we be people who are committed taking one day at a time, knowing how quickly we can relapse into the same behaviors that have made things in this moment worse? Will we be like our Jewish brothers and sisters who just recently celebrated the Passover and when they tell the Passover story, they act like it just happened. They act like they were the people that God brought out of Egypt, the people who walked across the Red Sea, and they act like God is still acting in history to save God's people from sin and death and slavery. Can we act like that? Can we recognize the ways that God is still overcoming death and destruction? Can we embrace that the cross and resurrection, Good Friday and Easter aren't separate? To do so is to tell a different story. The beginning of this change is Jesus himself, not simply because he was crucified and then risen, but when these women hear from the man at the tomb, you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised. Jesus has become what his life and ministry uh, brought forth. So Jesus has become exactly what he gave to the people that he healed and made whole. This same resurrection word, raise, raised, is used every time that there is a healing and resurrection in Mark's gospel. And so Jesus himself, the kingdom that he promised, is realized in this resurrection. Jesus is the first to be changed. And still he calls us, come, follow me, I'm going ahead of you, follow me into this world made different. The second change is these women who show up at the tomb. These women who show up at the tomb show up in grief and despair and they leave in terror and amazement and fear and more importantly, more importantly, what Jesus said all along, he said all along that the first will be last and the last shall be first. And these women, they were the last ones at the cross and they are the first ones at the empty tomb. These first proclaimers of the Easter message were the least likely to be believed simply because they were women. And so Jesus' ministry continues even after the cross, just as it began, seeking out the last and the least and making the last first in the kingdom of God. And the healing work begins. It's the message that they are given. Go and tell Peter and the others. Get the gang back together. 
first the other disciples who scattered and fled and couldn't follow to the cross. And Peter, who denied Jesus. Get the gang back together. There's healing, there's forgiveness. And the message here is, you are afraid, but you gotta do it anyway. You gotta do it anyway. Because the truth is, when we are most afraid, that is the moment that Jesus is closest to us. When we are afraid, we forget. We forget that God is still God. God keeps loving us still, even when we're afraid, even when we lose our minds. God is still God. Easter changes how we face moments like the one in which we live. Easter changes how we face loss and death. When people around us are struggling to get by, struggling to make sense, we as Easter people who know that the cross and Easter aren't two separate things, know that the world is still filled with crosses. And God is still right beside those people. And in this Easter world, there is hope and there is good news. But the truth is, and I will admit I have thought this a number of times on Easter Sunday when we all show up here and worship, the very last place that you should look for Jesus is where you expect to find him. Jesus isn't waiting around for people to get on board. Jesus is going ahead of us, and right now, into a tomorrow we can't see or understand, Jesus goes ahead of us right now. Friends, resurrection is not the final answer to life's challenges, and it does not bring an end to all life's problems. Resurrection changes the world by creating something new, and by faith, we trust those promises, but that faith doesn't remove us from the difficulties or the limits or the challenges that come every day. Resurrection creates the possibility that because God gets involved in history, that God intervened, first raising Jesus from the dead, and again by entering into our lives, that everything can be different. Fear can be crushing, and we might in these days be tempted to stay silent. But Christ, raised from the dead, gives us courage to face that which we are most afraid, because we don't face it alone. Jesus goes ahead of us. Friends, the world is indeed different. I hope you noticed. Easter is only the beginning. Christ is risen. Amen. Uh, just a second here. Uh, we're going to play a song. You know, of course, the choir couldn't be with us, but uh, Donna has gathered 11 of their voices recorded at different times um, to share an anthem with you. So uh, the anthem is called That Easter Day, and I hope you will just close your eyes and enjoy a moment of uh, imagining uh, the choir is lead us, leading us in worship.
Well, it's certainly a gift to, to hear the choir, and uh, someday Donna will explain how uh, such a voodoo is accomplished, but um, certainly a gift. Um, as we go to God in prayer, um, I want to invite you to share uh, in the comments, of course, if there are ways that we can be praying for each other to, to lift those up, and, and certainly we, uh, after the service, will make, make note of those and, and uh, be praying for them uh, as a body as well. Um, so I'll just give you a second for that. Um, I, I, I do know of a couple of folks that we should be praying for. Um, Rosa Watkins has asked for us to be in prayer for her as she's uh, healing. Um, uh, the Desens family is mourning the loss of um, an uncle today. Um, so we're we're holding them in prayer. Um, I'm going to invite you uh, after each petition. I'll say, I'll close with "Risen Lord," and uh, you can respond. Hear our prayer. All right. Let us pray this Easter morning. Holy God, you give us a voice, a voice to praise you, a voice to call out our deepest needs. You give a voice to all your children, even when we are frightened into silence. So we pray, God, we pray, God, that all those who, whose voices have been silenced and all those who are working to make their voices heard. We pray, God, that you would amplify their needs, their wisdom, that we all may praise you. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. In recent days, whether the sun is shining or the rain is coming or the snow is falling, and we try to make sense of this uh, wild world we live in. We see around us, Lord, signs of resurrection, of bulbs uh, working hard to become flowers, of grass returning uh, to green health. May we see in each, in each thing around us your promise to renew all creation, to remember your great vision for this world and for our lives. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, on that first Easter morning, as the women wondered how would they move the stone from the tomb, uh, we often are faced with great obstacles. And we're not sure what it is we're meant to do we doubt whether we have the gifts and skills to face such challenges. We pray, God, that you would show us what it is you have in store for our lives. Show us that you always make a way. Give us joy, God, as we use our gifts and skills to be faithful to you. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Your new life gives life to us. And so, God, we pray for healing and for peace and for wholeness, for all those who have shared uh, prayer requests and needs, for family that is suffering, for the Dezens family mourning, for Rosa, for Helen and Natalie, for David, and Zoe, for Paula, and Beth, and Debbie, and Jeannie, and Audrey, and Eric, for Harlow, for our mission partners in Nicaragua, with the challenges that they face today, for their leadership transition, for continued peace. 
All these things we pray, risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all the reasons that we're afraid, afraid of the things we know and the things we don't know, we entrust that fear to you, God, asking you to turn it into courage that we might face this day and every day with your assurance that you go with us, that you go ahead of us, and that we can expect to meet you along the way. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. In sadness and in joy, you hear our prayers, O God. Hold in your hands all these things for which we ask, trusting in the mercy of the one who defeated death, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear us, Lord, as we pray together the prayer that Jesus first taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as you uh, listen to Christ the Lord is risen today, I want to encourage you to make a point to go to our secure donation link there, uh, support MPC, uh, support the One Great Hour of Sharing. I know that they are already doing some pretty amazing work in the world as uh, places where this pandemic is especially bad. Um, so they are already hard at work and your one great hour of sharing dollars go to support that work. So I'm gonna invite you to uh, make, make an uh, offering uh, through the secure link. Uh, let's sing, listen to Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ the Lord is risen indeed, friends. As we go today, friends, I want to invite you to go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit always. Friends, happy Easter. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. <laughs>